Hey, thanks for worshiping with us. My name is Pastor Dan, and you joined us um, for the series that I'm really excited about. It's called Fueled, and, and it really is about the idea that we're all part of something something much more significant than just ourselves. Uh, we're, we're called to be on mission. And, and so we're talking about what's been going on here at Holy Cross, what, what's happened in the past, what is happening today, what's, what's happening in the future, and how it's so incredible to be a part of this mission that God has, has called us to be a part of. How he uses us and works through us and how he gives us the opportunity to be a part of something really incredible. You know, we would love to, to uh, come alongside of you and support you as, as you go through this thing called life. And so whether you're right around the corner or many miles away, um, feel free to reach out. Let us know how we can be praying for you and encouraging you um, as we go through this thing called life. Thanks again for joining us. Hey, good morning. It's so good to be in the Lord's house with you this morning. If we haven't met, my name is Jamie. I'm the director of worship here. It's great to be with you. There's something that, uh, something that happens, something special that happens when we gather in the Lord's house. Psalm 84 is titled, My Song, My Soul Longs for the Courts of the Lord. My Soul Longs for the Courts of the Lord. The choir master says this, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. My soul thirsts, my soul hungers 
There's a desire, not just a desire, but a need to be in the Lord's house. He continues in verse 10, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. The Lord is a sun and a shield, bestows favor and honor. Part of gathering in the Lord's house is to be able to celebrate what needs to be celebrated. Being able to bring our week together and to say, man, here's how I saw God move this week. What a joy. It's also about bringing the things from the week that we mourn. The big wins and big losses. We, we bring all of that together in community, in the house of the Lord. For our hunger to be satisfied, for our thirst to be quenched. In community with one another and in community with the Lord. And so when, when the psalmist says a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere, he's talking about that. I invite you to stand as we start our time in worship, as we, we sing about this love of God that pursues, about this love of God that we encounter in this place where one day in the courts of the Lord are better than a thousand elsewhere. I invite you to sing, sing with us, worship with us, bring the week together, be in community, be in the Lord's house this morning. Let's sing.
start with this invocation that's been spoken by gatherings of people like this in the Lord's house for hundreds of years, generations upon generations. This, this thing, this reflection on when we were baptized, God put his name on you. I said, that's my kid. And so in a day and age where it's so difficult to find an extra hour-ish of time in your week, who has an extra hour to give, right? To find an hour where we've said, Lord, this time is yours. This time is yours. I want to be in, in the Lord's house. So we make our beginning in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's continue our time in worship this morning. Lord God, Heavenly Father, your goodness is beyond measure. Your goodness is beyond comprehension. We 
can't understand it, can't explain it. Lord, we thank you for the ways that we've seen you move in our lives. We thank you for continuing to move in our lives. Holy Spirit, we ask now that you wouldn't just change the things that we do, change the things that we see, but Holy Spirit, change the things that we desire. Holy Spirit, work in our hearts that we would continue to be transformed by your great love for us. God, open our eyes to the mundane workings of you. We pray all of this that Christ will be magnified in the name of Jesus.
Good morning. The sermon series is called Fueled. And the idea is three weeks to look back at where we've been and where we are and today, kind of what's, what's God doing here in the midst of us? What's his purpose in this place? Well, back in the early church, there was a movement that was started when Jesus rose from the dead. A movement that began with people as they began to meet and talk about the transformation that Jesus brings because of his resurrection story and what his life means to ours. It says this in the book of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and everything in common. They sold property and possessions and gave anyone who had need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts and they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. People talk about the church in a lot of different ways. But to be honest, it's the most beautiful thing God created. We're not perfect by any means. But this is where God does his thing. God washes sins away in the waters of baptism and says, I forgive you. Here, Jesus says, I'll be present. And this bread and wine for communion and the forgiveness that I want, I give to you. It's a part of you today. Here we hear words of forgiveness shared and talked about. And all of a sudden, our unperfect ways, it's the one place where there's a sense of oneness with different people and different ages and different nationalities and different languages, different socioeconomic classes joined together with this sense that there's this love of Jesus that connects us and binds us together. Today's the challenge of where do I fit? Where do I fit in God's purpose of being the church, of bringing the love and freedom of God to each other? I'm not sure what's going on in your life or where there's a sense of, of disconnect or brokenness. Maybe you said something wish you could take back. Or maybe you're here just because your heart's broken. Maybe, maybe you're at a time of just grieving and sad. Or maybe there's something that was said to you that just broke your heart and you're still feeling hurt and broken. Or maybe there's expectations you've been trying to reach. You just can't seem to get there. And you go, what's wrong? Why can't I seem to get it? Or maybe there's literally something that triggers inside of you, brings you a sense of guilt and shame. You just wish you could just let go of it finally and be done. Not feel guilty anymore. The cool thing about church is we get together with other people and acknowledge I'm not alone in this sinful mess of struggling with sin and life. There's a bunch of other people with me here today. We have this opportunity to say to God, God, you know my heart. You know where I wrestle. You know where I struggle. And I want to own the things that I've said, own my own sin, and ask you, please, would you forgive me and let me put it behind me and let it go once and for all. So I'll give you a moment of silence. Really say, uh, I'm here with other people, but God, for this moment, you already know my heart, but I want to confess these sins and ask you, Jesus, would you please, would you forgive me for Jesus' sake? Take a moment of silence. It's an opportunity for us to have a time of confession. Dearest God and Father, you already know my heart. And you already know my life. But I confess these things and ask you, please, for Jesus' sake, would you shine your grace on me and forgive me and allow me to make the necessary changes to move forward from this place in my life with hope and forgiveness. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the cool things I get to do is stand before you as your pastor and speak just as if Jesus himself were standing here and speak words of God's forgiveness. And when Jesus died, he said, I know you, I know everything about you, and I still absolutely love you. I, I died to forgive you so you can be free. Put it behind you, let it go. The story is that Jesus died to forgive your sins, and so I say these words. As a called and ordained servant of God's word, in this place, I announce the grace and love and forgiveness of God to you. And by the authority you've given to me as your pastor, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. It says they gather together with glad and sincere hearts. The church is the one place where we don't just talk about stuff. We, we live out this forgiveness. We say, I, as God's forgiven me, I want to share that forgiveness with you. So we have a moment here this morning of worship to say, maybe the toughest person to forgive is standing next to you. Uh, to say, God, as you've loved and forgiven me, I want to share the love and forgiveness of God with you. Please take a moment and say, this peace of God, this little piece of heaven on earth where we love and forgive each other, it's experienced by us here in the church today as we love and forgive each other. Please greet those around you. The peace of the Lord be with you this morning. I love that little piece of heaven-ness that's in that, in shaking hands and sharing the peace of Christ. I invite you to, to have a seat at this time. Uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff going on at Holy Cross and a, a short video to highlight some of those things. So watch this video. Hi, and welcome to Holy Cross. My name is Jamie Smith, and these are your announcements for Sunday, November 19th. If you're a first time guest here today, we'd love to know you're here. Please stop by our connect tables on the way out and our team has a small gift for you. And if you're newer to Holy Cross, we'd love for you to join us for Pizza with the Pastors on Sunday, December 3rd. Pizza with the Pastors is an opportunity for you to meet our pastors and some of the staff at Holy Cross. You can learn about our mission, vision, and values or ask any questions you might have about what we're about and where we're going as a church. Please let us know you'll be here by signing up on our website or app. And if you call Holy Cross home, today is Pledge Sunday. It's our opportunity to bring forth before God what we can invest in Holy Cross, physically, relationally, spiritually, and financially. Letters and cards were mailed home last week to members and regular attendees. If you didn't bring your commitment card back with you today, we have extra copies in the back of the room. Everyone here will have a chance to bring their cards before God later in today's service. And if you're not ready to turn yours in today, that's okay. We just ask you return it by December 4 to either the church office or in the offering boxes in the back of the room. We also have an electronic version you can fill out online. And today we have a new impact offering. As we look ahead to Christmas, we have a giving tree that benefits children in foster care through Bethany Christian Services. We are supporting kids with specific gifts they want for Christmas. You can simply take a tag off one of our giving trees, buy it, wrap it, and return it to Holy Cross by December 17th. You can also help by purchasing needed gift cards for foster families. They have needs for groceries or clothing, or you can bless them with a gift card to a local restaurant. All monetary offerings will go towards these items as well. Continuing to look ahead to Christmas, our Advent devotions are here. Our staff invites you to join us as we prepare our hearts for Christmas and experience God's love in unexpected places. Devotions will be handed out as you leave today. We ask you take one per family, and if you are a school family, yours was already sent home on Friday with your oldest child. So we appreciate you checking their backpack before taking one today. And here's a really cool thing. Inside each devotion is a Christmas invitation card you can use to invite someone to Christmas Eve at Holy Cross this year. Last Sunday, Pastor Dan challenged us to invite more people to Holy Cross. He shared kind of a scary statistic that Lutherans on average only ask one person to church every 30 years. So let's beat that statistic. Let's help it out and invite more friends to church. Speaking of the holidays and Christmas, next Sunday, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, we will host our Pi Social in between services. 
The Ladies' Christmas Gathering is on Monday, December 4, where you can partake in a cookie exchange, shop Trades of Hope, or make Christmas crafts. Lots of optional activities that night. Our first Advent service will be on Wednesday, December 6 at 6.30, with a Chick-fil-A dinner beforehand at 5.30. And if you have younger kids, you won't want to miss this fun opportunity we have on Sunday, December 10, when your kids can be recorded to be in our special kids video we will play on Christmas Eve. And Holy Cross will head to Winter Lights at Newfields on December 17th. Tickets are required and we have a limited number available. All the details, signups, and more for these events can be found on our website or app. If you don't have the Holy Cross app, please download it today. Thanks again for being here with us today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. So lots of good stuff. It is time now for Holy Cross Kids. So we are going to dismiss grade school out that way and preschool out that way. Awesome. Awesome. We love having kids in worship services to be able to... Um, to see grown-ups, how you interact with the Word, how you um, pray and approach confession and absolution, um, but we also value that age-appropriate teaching. So that's why we structure things that way. Uh oh, I see a lot of waving hands still. Here we go. This is always the like most chaotic part. So now that they're gone, no. <laughs> no. <clears throat> so all throughout the Psalms, we, we read this, this line, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. And uh, you may read it and say like, man, like, how am I gonna, how am I able to bless the Lord? And, and it's not like we're not doing anything for God, but we are responding to God's goodness in that saying the Lord has blessed this the Lord has blessed me in this way we're starting in my small group this study on uh, this, a book called Your God is Too Glorious where it talks about um, how our God is a God that is uh, in the mountain moving but in the mundane as well the cups of coffee with co-workers and the you know, passing people in the hallway and interactions at the grocery store and all those things those all have, have marked our community, right? It's about interacting and, and being in community with one another. And so we've, we've seen the ways that God has moved in the mighty, and we've seen how God is able to move in the mundane. And so when we say bless the Lord, it's, all right, God, I, I see you working here. I see you moving here. Bless the Lord. Thank you for opening my eyes to that. So I know we just sat down after kind of a long time standing, but if you would, humor me and stand up as we sing this, as we, as we say, bless the Lord for all of the ways that he has blessed us. As we say, bless the Lord, God, I see you moving. Let's sing.
has come still my soul sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever The grieving process is hard. The becoming overnight, becoming a single parent is hard. Um, and he was my best friend, so that sucks a lot. I don't say sucks at church. <laughs> um, there she is. <laughs> We enrolled Logan, our oldest son, in uh, kindergarten here. And we're like, well, before we go, we'll kind of join the church. And, and this, from the first sermon that we had, it really felt like a family. Felt like a family, like instantly, like instantly kind of felt known. We lost our best friend, Kirsten's husband, a year ago. The Lears reached out to all of us because all of us were just in this emotional tornado. We didn't know which end was up, what to do, and they were, it was Advent Church, and so they're like, just come with us. It's a, a time that we are going through that yeah. we don't know how to face at this age. Lucina has been, there, it's just, no. there are no words to help. It's, okay, God, yeah. let's go. Doing? Like, I don't know what to say, but here, come to church. And before I brought you guys, like I texted Nicole, because Nicole is just that way. Like, I barely knew her, but I still like, felt like Nicole is that type of person, mm -hmm. like it's family. So I'm like telling my other family member, like, hey, I'm bringing in somebody who's going through this. And I, you know, like I said, I didn't know Nicole that well, but I just felt comfortable enough to share that with her. Mm -hmm. And then Nicole comes in and swoops up Kirsten mm -hmm. and helps her along the way. And Mike and I actually, I mean, literally had probably been to every church in the city of Indianapolis, like, and we could never find anything that we liked or wanted to stick with. And so we would jump all the way around. And we had just talked about Holy Cross for AV. And like, we just hadn't gotten here yet, <laughs> which sounds really bad. But I think it was a sign that she sent it out to us and then turning to faith during everything that I was going through brought me great peace. I remember I met with Pastor Dave about three weeks after I was here for the first time and I literally talked to him for like two and a half hours and it was like, oh, I'm this makes sense and I, I fit here and they understand and I'm good and like, I just kept coming back. Every, after every sermon we'd walk out and say hi and they would, they recognized us and they knew us and it just was instantly that we see you, we love you, you're here. Mm -hmm. There was an instant connection, yeah. mm -hmm. I would say. Like, you feel very connected when you walk in the door. I will admit, initially, I was intimidated by Holy Cross. 
just the appearance of it outside and not having an edgy <laughs> or a religious background. So I was like, what am I gonna get into? But as soon as I walked in the door, I just felt this ease come over my body and I was no longer intimidated or afraid. It just felt like this is where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Like our girls are supposed to be here. We're supposed to do this together. Coming here, this is probably the most welcoming and engaged that I've ever felt at a church. So it's been great to, to come here and experience that. It is amazing what can transpire when you do lean into your faith. And I never thought that that would be a part of my life. I will be getting baptized and our, our two daughters will be baptized next Sunday. And we're very excited. And Kirsten's a godmother. The Lears are gonna be there to support us. And it's just- Family. Family, Family. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love the, the idea of family, people living life together as friends um, in a way that it's more than just friends, right? It's like being vulnerable with one another and, and inviting them when they find somewhere where they can experience God's love, inviting them to experience what Jesus can bring in the midst of the good and the bad. And there's a story of one in the midst of well, this tornado they felt like they were in. It, it, and it's, it's cool to see how that gets contagious I, because that group, they keep doing it. Like those Lears, they're crazy. <laughs> like they're changing that whole stat for the Lutherans already, right? They're the, like almost every week they're finding somebody that they can invite, which is amazing. It's awesome, right? Because the reality is that every single one of us, we know people that are struggling with something. We know people that are going through things in their life, and, and maybe it's one of those moments where they find out that there's like this, this hole in their life. They can't figure out how to fill. Maybe it's, it's one of those times where, where, well, the status quo can get challenged. You know what I mean? And they'll actually bring down the defenses just long enough to, to actually listen and hear. And, and maybe, just maybe, well, maybe if even for some of you, Today, it allowed you to go through the doors of a church, maybe for the first time in a long time, or ever. And you know what our prayer is? Is that if you come into this community, that you'll find a community that, where you're known and loved. And our prayer is that when you come here, you would hear about a God that passionately loves you, even though you don't have it together. And you'll meet other people, including me, who don't have it all together. And you'll meet Jesus. And the grace and the love that only comes through Jesus, which leads you to have a life that's transformed. It's different. It's changed. So for those of you um, who are guests, um, my name is Dan, I'm a Pastor Dan, and, and we're so glad that you're here. And I, I know some of you are here because of um, the story you just heard, and others of you are here because of a story uh, of a friend of mine. Um, but we've been on a journey as a family of faith over the last few weeks. We've been in this series called Fueled, and you might wonder what that's all about. Well, it comes actually from a, a metaphor that was introduced four years ago as Pastor Sattler, who was here um, almost three decades in this ministry. He was retiring, and in that retirement sermon, he talked about how this ministry is kind of like a rocket launch. And he was a part of that first stage where the, the, the ministry was uh, taking off, and now as he retires, it's... It's that transition into stage two. And so for those of us who call this place home, we're, we're a part of that mission that began years ago. And yet we're called to be all in and fuel this mission forward into stage two so that it keeps going well beyond us. And so we've been on this journey of looking at what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do. 
And we began with what God has done. And we, we dove into the story about Joshua and the Israelites. And right before they're going into the promised land. And, and they are commanded by God to go. And they got to cross the Jordan River. And at the time, it was a flood stage. And there was no way they could do it on their own. They would drown. But we talked about the only by God moments. God showed up, parted the waters, and they walked on dry ground. And they they built this monument of river rocks on the other side to remember. And so then we dug into the the past here at Holy Cross and how over the last um, almost 35 years, uh, how God has worked. He's worked through people like Pastor Sattler. Um, He's worked through many of you that are here, um, and people that you know, maybe your relatives, uh, friends. And and he's built something that's pretty, pretty special. And we've seen how God has worked, and we've overcome things. We've accomplished some pretty amazing things. We've got an amazing school of 550 kids that are right here that we get to bless on a regular basis. We've seen God at work. And we gave a river rock at the end of that service because we wanted you to remember that the same God that showed up with Joshua and the same God that showed up with with Pastor Sattler or the other individuals that began this ministry is the same God that shows up in your life and in mine right now. And he will show up in the future, tomorrow and the next day. Then the second week, last week, we, we talked about what is. And we, we unpacked the story of Nehemiah. And, and Nehemiah, he went back to Jerusalem, and Jerusalem was in ruins, and the, the wall around the, the, the city was in rubble. And, and he, he was moved, and, and God used him to rally the troops and do the impossible. But like, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to be all in and rebuild these walls. It seemed impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. And then we talked about looking at what is now. And and, and though we're a a thriving, healthy, growing church, which is awesome, but we look in the world around us, and it's hurting. The world around us is struggling. There's never been so much unrest in this world. There's our, our country's never been more divided. People have never been more isolated, even though they're so connected. And they've never been so so void of God. And yet we have the answer. We have Jesus. In fact, it's us, followers of Jesus. uh, that That's how the kingdom of God is breaking in. And and we can provide an environment for one another and for others that that are around us who need this community, a biblical community, where they can focus on Jesus. And what we'll see in the midst of that is lives transformed and our lives transformed in the process. And, And so this morning, our goal is to see... What will be? And, and here's the point. The point is, is what, what has been and what is is only the beginning of what will be as God moves in us and through us as we faithfully strive to follow Jesus. And so let's dive in. We're, we're going to be in, in Romans 12, so you don't have to look it up. It's on the screen. But if you've got a Bible or you've got a phone, you can pull it out if you like. We're going to be in Romans chapter 12, and we're going to start verse 1. Romans is a letter that was written by a guy to a church. And it's written by, maybe you've heard of him, a guy named Paul. Paul wrote most of the, well, half of the New Testament. Um, he's an apostle of God. God used him, transformed his life massively to start all kinds of churches. And, and so he's writing this letter to a church in Rome that was filled with a bunch of people who were new converts. They, they didn't grow up in church. They didn't grow up religious. Um, they weren't Jewish or anything like that. There were a few of them, but mostly... They weren't. And so Romans is huge. I mean, I took a whole seminary class on the book of Romans. And so I don't want to simplify it or dumb it down so much. But we could do, we could do weeks, maybe months on this. But to really make it simple, Romans is about two things. It's about the gospel. It's about the good news of Jesus. Don't mess it up. <laughs> and it's about, okay, now what? How does that impact this? 
in our life. That's what it's about. And in the book of Romans, there is this one word that comes up over and over again. It's a really important word. In the Greek, it's un. You'll never read that. I get that. But uh, in the English, it's therefore. And basically, it's where Paul is like, hey, listen up. Don't fall asleep. Anybody fall asleep yet? <laughs> this is really important. you got to get this. You have to understand it. And it's oftentimes a transition point. And right here at Romans 12, verse 1, scholars would say this is the transition point. Hey, wake up. Listen up. Now what? Right? And so it's saying now after you grasp the gospel, you get the gospel. You understand this good news of Jesus. You understand the, the for all I've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For, for the wages of sin is death. For while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For, for the, uh, I, I don't do what I want to do and I do what I don't want to do. The, that, all of that. When you start to really grasp that the gift of God is, is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That if you believe with your mouth, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. When you grasp that, Paul says, okay, now this. Let's pick it up at 12 verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, in view of that good news, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Big, huge statement, isn't it? Big, huge statement. Uh, Last week, we talked about how uh, before Jesus, the Israelites, they all were looking for the presence of God in one place. It was in the temple of God. That's where they went. And, and so when the temple was destroyed, everything was destroyed for them. And, but we talked about because of Jesus, because the Holy Spirit has come on us, now the temple isn't in a building. You know where the temple is? It's in you. It's in me. God's presence is in us. In the New Testament, it talks about how, you know what, it's not just you and me individually, but us collectively. Where the body of Christ, where the people who follow Jesus are, that's the presence of God. That's the temple. And then he, he, he says, Paul says, offer your lives, your bodies, your everything as a sacrifice. Everything you do, your relationships, your everyday life, it has a different purpose, a different meaning to follow Jesus and give glory back to God in some kind of way. Why? Well, because we've been bought at a price. And so now we offer by responding and giving our whole lives to Jesus. Verse 2. So don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Don't conform to the rest of the world. Don't go along with the flow. I mean, that's so easy to do, isn't it? But no, you have a new allegiance, a new identity. Because of Jesus, it impacts our, our purpose and our, our meaning. It transforms us. It changes us. You're different. And yet, you know what? Some of us, we might struggle to really see that or buy that or, or really grab a hold of that. Here's what I mean. Um, I, I don't know how many of you guys, um, some of you probably aren't church. Some of you probably lived in church all your life. Uh, uh, for me, I grew up in church. My dad was a pastor. Um, and you're like, well, that's why you're a pastor. Actually, no. Actually, for a while, I wasn't a pastor because I wasn't going to be a pastor like my dad. But I don't remember a time when I didn't know God. I don't remember a time that I didn't have faith in Jesus. And honestly, as a kid, I used to be jealous of people who didn't know Jesus. Sounds weird, doesn't it? And it wasn't so much because, you know, they could do certain things that I shouldn't. Although there were a few years in my life that maybe that crossed my mind. <laughs> no, it was really because I was jealous. Because I saw some of my friends who didn't know Jesus and became a follower of Jesus. And they had 
this incredible experience. They had this incredible story. They, they were passionate about God. I'm like looking at myself. I'm like, hey, God, I got robbed. You know, uh, where, where's the transformation that I get, right? I guess there's no transformation for me. But over the years, I found out that that was a big old lie. It's a big old lie. Last week, we, we saw uh, some testimonies of, of Zach and Dwayne. And Dwayne, uh, he, he shared that for decades, decades, he bought into that lie. A lie that, that Satan wants to lull us to sleep. He, he said he was sleepwalking through his faith. You don't have to raise your hand, but anybody relate to that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But what we know is that you know, we may not have those 180 kind of experiences. Some of us might. Some of us might be on the verge of having one of them right now. But we all, we all are called to a life of transformation. We are. That God is constantly working on us and molding and shaping. And, and, and the sanctification thing is like a lifelong kind of thing where we, we understand we have this new identity. We have this new purpose. We, we have a, a whole new mission in life. And so conversion, or that 180, is, is just the first step on this massive journey that God wants to take us on. But what we know is that my life, your life, is to be about this experience of, of transformation. So Paul, he starts to unpack a little bit of that transformation for us. Uh, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Uh, for just as each of us has one body with many members... And these members do not have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, we form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. This is a biggie right here. This biggie is that you and me, we're a part of something bigger than just ourselves. Which is hard for us to sometimes grasp, right? Because oftentimes, anybody here live like life is about me? You all should raise your hand right now. Right? We do. We, we, we think it's all about me. But it's not all about you. It's not all about me. Honestly, you know what it's about? It's about we. It's about what God is doing in us and through us. It's about we. And, and then it goes on. And it says, and, and we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. And so if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, you better do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. What we realize is that we need all of us. And that... That, that's what we're seeing here and what we're striving here as a family of faith. That God is equipping the body of Christ right here through us. Through us coming together as, as a family, as a family, right? As a family that, that is encouraging one another, another and using our past experiences and our gifts, our talents, our finances, our whatever, for this mission that God has given us to move and fuel this mission forward. Yeah, our goal is not just to check the box of faith and go through the motions, but to really fuel this mission. A mission from God. All right, turn one last place with me. Acts chapter 2. You heard it a little bit from Pastor Dave just a few moments ago. And it's one of those places that we see in the Bible where, where God gives us a picture of the early Christian church. And, and I love seeing what that's about. It's just this movement that's happening. And here's what they were about. They, were devoted, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. They were about this. They were about the good news. They were about 
the gospel. They were about God's word. They were diving in. They were students of this. But they weren't students of this necessarily just in, their, in a closet, right, isolated alone. They were in community together around this. They devoted themselves to the teaching and to, to fellowship and to the breaking of bread. Here, this is talking about actually communion the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And everyone was, was filled with awe with the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And all the believers were together, and they had everything in common. And, and they sold property and possession to give to anyone who had a need. They were, they were all in. They were sacrificially unified for the needs in the community for what the community needed to accomplish. And, and every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts and they, they broke bread. This is different than in verse 43. This is, this is actually like they ate together. They, they had fellowship together and they, and they broke bread and they, in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord, he added to their number daily those who were being saved. I love reading about the early Christian church. Now, they had their issues. They had persecution and all kinds of things that were going on, right? But there was a God movement that was happening. And that God movement was around just a few core things, core things that we as a church, we, we hold on to. And it, it began with our, our number one value here is God's word over our words. It, it began with this. God's word, being in God's word. And then it, it was focused on this, you know, gathering together in worship to praise God. It was about the sacrament. We, we gather around it twice a month for the sacrament. It, it, it was about prayer and about talking to God. It was about fellowship. The reality that we need others in our life who, who know us, who know we don't have it all together and who who can come alongside of us and help us through some of the hardest times in life, right? Can encourage us, love on us, and show grace to us. And when those things are at the center, at the core of who you are, of a community, I mean, that's where life change happens. That's where we're where transformation happens. That's where people's lives are, are flipped upside down and totally changed. That, that's where story after story is written because God is at work. He, he's at work in, in some of the best moments and exciting moments of life and some of the hardest, most tragic moments of life. But God is at work and stories are written. Stories like this one. My name is Chris Condit. Uh, we've been a part of Holy Cross since 2020, uh, first for school and, and later on as members of the church here. God brought us to Holy Cross through the COVID pandemic, through my son struggling, and me being a, a blockhead uh, dad back then, uh, one singular focus, uh, all I wanted to make sure was that my son could still play on a seventh grade football team. The, the Lions Club is full of people uh, walking the path with Christ every day. This, this football team, its mission is to be uh, a, a mission for Christ through football. And also, it is a religious-based uh, organization. And they needed a junior high head coach, so I jumped right in and said I would do it, uh, not really knowing what I was getting into. Um, one of the things that we had to do every day after practice was give a a devotion, a 15 minute devotion with the team. And, you know, I was just a creaster. I'd show up on Christmas and Easter and, and that was it. And I felt very out of my depth. Luckily, one of the athletes from Holy Cross that joined the Lions was Nate Hauser. And I was able to call Dan and say, hey buddy, you wanna come and coach football? And it was really, hey buddy, I need you to come do these devotionals at the end of practice every day, <laughs> you know? and. Uh, uh, Dan was, was awesome. Uh, I should backtrack now. In the summer of 21, 
just after Memorial Day, uh, I got diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And that's a lightning bolt. I don't know why I got this. I think it's just some random thing that happened. Uh, but I do know in the process, I've been tremendously humbled. Um, and I think that's God working uh, on me uh, because prior to my diagnosis, you know, if you go back to 2015, 16, I was a pretty sure of myself guy. You know, I believed that I could overcome anything by force of personality, that uh, I was the smartest guy in the room, you know, and, and I'm not exaggerating, but that's how I honestly felt. But through, through cancer, uh, cancer strips everything away. You know, I have trouble walking. I have trouble breathing. Everything is harder, but it's even harder on my wife and my children and my parents and my brothers and my sisters-in-law than it is on me. Uh, my wife, Heather, is a warrior. Um, she does everything. And a as a husband who's used to being the provider, used to being the, the guy who handles things, to be able to handle nothing and watch your wife have to do it, uh, that humbles you. And through this entire thing, uh, the, the one thing I've been able to, to plant my, my boots on that was solid ground, uh, I should say two things, is my marriage and my relationship with God. Uh, I didn't know it, and this is a common phrase, I had a God-shaped hole in, in my body that I was trying to fill with baloney. And that, it was all bull, it was all fake. Um, I found real in God and, and in my relationship with Jesus. I found peace in my relationship with Jesus. People ask me all the time, I tell them, as miserable as this whole thing is, I'm happier today than I ever have been in my entire life. And that's a weird thing to say, but it's true. And, and Jesus has done that for me. It's changed my relationship with my wife, where, you know, it's always been good, but now we have this, this bond and we talk about our faith and we talk about where that's leading us next. And uh, man, we found strength in that. The, the transformation Holy Cross has brought to my family, I, I can't, um, I can't tell you the difference. People that say that, you know, our sense of community is lost, uh, they're completely wrong. They're just not going to church. And uh, I tell everybody all the time, I said, uh, I, I go to Holy Cross because, because I, I, I need a church uh, to support me. I need the church to support our family. I find strength through, through the church. But I said, it's also awesome that the pastor there is also my friend. And um, so I trust him. And I, I trust what's going on here. And uh, uh, I know that, that we're, we're building a, a community here that, that, that is righteous, that, but is honest and, and supports one another. It's amazing the way things started getting lined up for me with the, the Lions football and with our, our, our re-engagement uh, with church to be able to handle what was coming. And it, it's not only amazing for me, but it's been amazing for my family. God will put people in your path and open doors for you that you have to walk through. You know, every night my family, and this is totally true, we pray for a couple of things uh, every night that God provides us with opportunities and he gives us the wisdom and strength to walk through those doors. The community is there if you look for it. And uh, uh, we, we've seen that all along our, our journey here.
Wow. There's a story of how Jesus transforms people's lives. Chris, <laughs> there's one part of the, the deal he didn't live up to, and that was being here today. But maybe, just maybe, maybe there's a reason. Maybe it's so you were here. Maybe it's so you would be here to hear his story. And you would hear about the kind of hope and peace that Heather and Kirsten so many other people have found in only Jesus. I had the honor this past week um, to, to come alongside of you guys and be at some of those most sacred moments. I got to see Chris transform into the last part of his journey. So there's tears. Uh, <laughs> there's tears, but we don't mourn like the rest of the world. Because we get to hold on to Jesus. Now those of you who know Chris, he, he was a loud guy, right? I mean, and, and as far as coaching football, I mean, if you were on his team, you better not run the wrong route or make the wrong block, or do something bad as a special teams coach. He actually, I got that raise. I got up to special teams, yeah. In the last year and a half, even though his voice might not have been quite as booming, it was just as loud, if not louder, as he left this huge wake of his faith and of his testimony of who he held on to. And it's a story of transformation, but honestly, it's a story of him impacting so many others, including maybe some of you to hear today. Heck, it impacted me as I got to walk with him and he got to speak to me about his faith. I mean, that transformed me. It impacted my, my younger son it is in class with his younger daughter. My other son, that's his coach. And so for a season, I got to be his wingman on the sidelines. Today, he got to be mine. And can I just say, that is why I believe what I believe. That's why I do what I do. That's why we are who we are as a church. Over and over again, he and Heather said, how would people do this if they didn't have faith? How would they walk through this if they didn't have faith? That's why. Now, I'm more and more passionate about what I do and what we are about as a ministry. Now, I know some of you are guests this morning, and so the, this, this part really isn't about it for you. But, but those of you who call this place home, this past week, we, we asked you to pray over a commitment to this ministry. Because we're passionate about life change. We're passionate about transformation. We're passionate about reaching families that are de-churched and unchurched and away from God or, or, or question God or, or don't even know that they need God because they have this hole but they haven't figured it out. And so we, we gave you this commitment card and we asked you to commit to fuel our ministry forward relationally by really praying about who are you going to invite who are you going to invest in? 
to commit physically, like how are you going to use your time and your talents for this family of faith so we can move forward? Commit spiritually to not be on the sideline, but actually dive in. Be in God's word and grow in your faith and help others to grow along with you. And commit financially. Because we don't want to be a, a church of status quo. We, we have so much more we, would, we pray God would use us to do. And so at this next song, we're going to give you an opportunity uh, for those who are called this place home to, to bring forward your, your pledge card, your commitment card. I can't say this enough, that though this might be, happen in the context of Holy Cross this commitment is not to Holy Cross we're not we're not building Holy Cross this commitment is God it's about growing his kingdom it's about sharing what we've experienced in, in our little part of the world with others so others can see Jesus and our prayer is that we just be faithful, faithful with what God gives us, whatever that is, with the mission that he's given us, whatever that is. And so as you feel led, um, we've got this box that just give a chance for you to perfectly bring that forward during this time.
Let's pray with me. Heavenly Father, um, we bring these commitments forward to you, and it's our pledge, it's our offering. We ask, Lord, that you would use what we can offer, the meager things we offer, and you can do your incredible, eternal things through it all. That, Lord, whatever it is that we bring forward, you would do immeasurably more into your glory, God that in the process it would impact people so that they might hear and experience who you are. And Lord, that we would be transformed along the way. God, I just pray that, um, that Lord, every single person in here would hear of your grace, your love. The fact that we, we don't have to have it all together. In fact, there's not a single person in here who does. And so we might feel like we're far from you, God. We might feel like we don't belong here, God. And yet this is exactly where we need to be, in your presence. Lord, make, help each one of us to, to hold on to you. Reach out to somebody and if we're struggling or if we're wondering or if we're questioning, Lord, to, to understand who you are and what you offer to us. that it, It's not about what we bring to the table. It's about what you've done upon the cross in our place. Left to our own, Lord, we just do what we shouldn't do and don't do what we should. But you shower us with grace. Lord, there's all kinds of things in our hearts and our minds that are wrestling and struggling with right now, Lord. Um, and yet you, you welcome us to you, that we can, we can share our hearts with you, unfiltered even. We can, uh, we can just, we just pour it out. And so, Lord, for those who are hurting right now, Lord, we pray for your peace and your comfort. For those with questions right now, Lord, we pray for your wisdom and your direction. For those who are going through a, a trial or, or, or have a loved one that's sick, Lord, we, we ask that you would be with them. Specifically, Lord, we pray for Mary Boone and Justin, my friends, his cousins, Daniel and Rich, who are sick. For Christy Themes' father, Sherry Wilkie and Max. Lord, bring healing. Bring answers. Guide the, the, the doctors. Lord, we pray for Bob Halls, who is in rehab, for Joyce Welsh and Randy, my friends, Justin's dad, who just got diagnosed with cancer, for Andrea Clarkson, also fighting cancer. Lord, we pray that you give them the strength, that the treatment would work, that you bring healing to their bodies. Lord, sometimes we know that doesn't happen. So we pray for Terry Bell and Irene Johnson who are in hospice right now for those final days, that they would hold on to you, that, that they would hold on to your promises, that you be with their family, those around them. Pray for those in long-term care. Lord, give them strength, their families as they walk along them. Finally, Lord, we lift up um, the Kondak family, friends, family of, of Chris, what a gift we got to just hear in his own words what you mean to him. And Lord, we know he right now is with you. We thank and praise you that he doesn't have any more pain. He's not struggling anymore just to breathe. And so we're struggling. It stinks. But we hold on to you. And we know, Lord, that you will walk us through this. You never leave us. You never forsake us. And you give us a hope, a hope to hold on to. Lord, thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray.
Heavy today, huh? We've got some people up here at the end of the service. They, they'd love to pray with you. Maybe this is the day that you come forward and just tell them what you want to pray about or just want somebody to pray over you. They'll be here at the end of the service. As you leave, we do have this uh, devotional booklet. It's a booklet our, our staff, we, we wrote. It's for Advent. It starts December 1st. We'd love for your family to take one and, um, and join us on that journey. And there's an invite card for Advent. That's how <laughs> the Lears invited their family to come along for the ride. We have a custom here of cupping our hands um, because God pours into us in a way that overflows to the world around the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his unending peace. You've been blessed to be a blessing. Go in his peace. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in worship this morning. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks again for worshiping with us. You know, we'd love for this to not be just today. We'd love for you to be a part of this, this community in whatever way you would like to. And so reach out, let us know how, how we can be praying for you or how we can come alongside of you. Or maybe you would like to get involved in a small group or a Bible study or serve in some kind of way. You know, I'd love to, to grab a cup of coffee with you or, or grab lunch and, and just hear a little more about your story. And, get to know you a little bit better. Or if you're far away, we have a Bible study that we can send you based completely on this message you just heard. Thank you for being a part of our, our community and, and we hope that you would, you would consider us a part of your, your family, your extended family as we, we go on this thing called life together.